I'm swagging Elf and nigga that crime follows I'm hitting fine models I'm stabbing punks with broken wine bottles I beat chunks till they head splits Then break them like bread sticks I sex chicks, I leave and fuck a dead bitch Always spraying text because I be staying vexed Some nigga named Dex was in the project Guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Today I'm going to review my first fragrance from the House of Frappam. And uh, this is a scent um, that doesn't get a lot of love. The most obviously from Frappam that gets a lot of love is either 1270 or Lycumeniste. Um, I like those. Neither of those really perform on my skin. Um, and there's a shitload of reviews on those already. So I wanted to blind buy one that doesn't get a lot of hype. And I bought this guy, uh, Passion Bois. And uh, that's what we're going to look at today. Frappin, first and foremost, guys, is a cognac producer that dates back to 1270. They decided to take the care that they put into spirit and do the same with a fragrance line. Now, the current owners of Frappin are Genevieve Frappin and Max Quantro. And their daughter, Beatrice Quantro, is the one who actually started the perfume business in 2002. Since then, they have really thrived. They have over 10 cents in their lineup. They've worked with many established perfumers such as Bertrand Duchot Four, um, Marc Antoine Corciato. As far as my experience goes with the house, I tried 1270 from Decan Shop, loved it. Um, just never became sold on a full bottle. Uh, whenever I tried it on my skin, I'd get a couple hours at best. Next one I tried that I was really interested in was 1697, and that was probably the one I'd say I was most excited uh, to try. And it reminded me exactly, and I do mean exactly, of Vigny Absumont. Uh, by the artist and parfumer that used to of course be Havan Vigny um, and Dusho 4 also did that fragrance like 1697 so it seemed a little bit of a double dip for me. Uh, I also tried Luministe. Again, I think Luministe smells great. Uh, it's sparkling, crisp, but it was a total dud on my skin. But with that said, I was really interested in the house because everything that I'd smelled from them smelled good. There were really a few that, that piqued my interest. Uh, one called a Paradise Purdue, which is supposed to have these vegetal notes. Uh, Speakeasy is another one that really spoke to me. It's got a mojito vibe and was done by Marc Antoine Corciato of Parfum de Empire. I'm a big fan of Parfum de Empire. Love Ambra Russe. Um, and their leather one as well. I think those are great fragrances. Uh, Terre de Cerement was another from Frappon that I was interested in. That's supposed to be a really nice spice citrus scent. So I was on eBay one day. I had the chance to get really any of those. An international seller was selling, um, I think, really many bottles from the line for around $110. And I just decided to go with this one. Uh, and we'll talk about this one. This one came out in 2007. Uh, the nose behind this one is Jean-Marie Figuet. Now, I'm not familiar with her work, but she has done a few for Frappin, and she also did Bahina for Matra Parfum Perfume et Gantier, which is, uh, of course, the classic um, a French house started by Jean-Francois Laporte after uh, he left La Artisan. And uh, MPG, uh, Bahina for MPG, is supposed to be a really nice coconut, citrusy, uh, warm weather scent. Most of the scents that I've experienced from MPG have been warmer, a colder weather based. Um, uh, Figuet also did a fragrance for Parfum MDCI as well, another house that I'm a really big fan of. Your notes on this one are going to be tangerine, nutmeg, rum, and clove at the top, oak moss and oak in the middle, patchouli, leather, and cedar in the base. Now in New York City, not a lot of outlets that have these places. Um, Barney's has them. Uh, I know Min used to. I don't know if Min is still carrying this line. Lucky Scent uh, always has them, as does Beauty, um, not Beauty Spinner, Beauty Encounter, Beauty Habit. Uh, one size only, 100 ml of uh, Eau de Parfum, and they run retail $195. Uh, as I said, I did pick up my bottle for $110 on eBay. As far as your presentation goes, Box is a little flimsy uh, for, for, I guess, a $200 fragrance. It's this Passion Bar, Eau de Parfum, uh, lock code on the bottom, info on the sides, strike continues on the top with the frappin um, um, script, and then your bottle 
uh, looks a lot like uh, the Rasasai, um, not the Rasasai, the, uh, uh, what's the fragrance? You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it'll come back to me. Uh, but it looks like that's an Arabic scent, uh, sacred wood. Ragba, Ragba by Latafa Perfume. Almost this exact same bottle shape and size. The difference here is the cap, which has Frappon engraved. It is a wooden cap, I believe. You have your sticker on the bottom. Really nice atomizer, definitely a good distribution of juice. So a decent bottle, decent box. As far as the actual fragrance goes, really unique and really beautiful. It opens up with a really weird, someone on Fragrantica compared the opening to turpentine, and I get that. Uh, the first time I smelled that, I was smelled this, I was really like, uh, I fucked up. Um, but it really settles quickly, and it, I mean really quickly, into this gorgeous combination of clove, fresh tangerine, and rum, which gives it this boozy uh, vibe to it. And I think that's where a lot of the tur turpentine uh, comes from. But it starts off really fresh and uplifting. Um, as it, as it dries down, uh, the citrus is still going to be there. The fragrance is going to become, though, about tangerine, leather, woods, and cloves. Such a unique combination, one that I've never come close to experiencing in a fragrance. As it reaches its final dry down, to me, guys, this run becomes a lot about uh, oak moss, cedar, leather, and tangerine it becomes very woody very masculine it never loses its freshness and i i'm going to guess that's because there's a pretty good dose of iso e super in this one now i'm actually wearing it now and i'm fully at the dry down and at this stage it's really about cedar and tangerine and a little bit of clove and that might not sound that appealing but it really is it's this beautiful fresh woody fragrance. If you like cedar fragrances but find them to be a little off-putting, well the combination of the spice and the tangerine really does make this one something interesting. So just remember the top freshness, a little bit of an alcohol uh, vibe right at the top. It's going to settle down into tangerine and leather and cloves and then as it really dries down it's going to really settle into tangerine and cedar. But that tangerine is throughout the scent and it's a really good tangerine note. As far as your performance, it's well done. This isn't super juice, but it's also not going to let you down. It's going to be a good performer, and depending on the season um, or time of year, possibly a very good performer. The projection is light, but the sillage is very good, and the longevity is very good. I think the gender assignment game in fragrances is foolish, but this is a scent that I would think men would gravitate to more than women. It has some very classic men's notes with the rum and the clove and the citrus. Uh, I mean, the rum and the clove mixed with the citrus. Citrus is obviously unique. Universal as our Roman cloves. Um, in my opinion, this is a four season scent because it has that citric woody freshness you can wear in the spring and even get away with in the summer. But I think this is best in the fall time um, or, or in the winter as well. That leather clove rum is going to do best in the fall. It's a really good work scent. It's not too boozy to be a work scent and easily signature scent worthy. Uh, great night out scent as well. If I were trying to make comparisons to this, it's really tough. I guess the two I could give you guys, Terre de Hermes sort of have that um, citrusy sort of earthy vibe and this sort of has a citrusy woody vibe so they're kind of similar in structure but they smell very different. There's a fragrance called Antidote by the Italian house Piccato Original and that one has tangerine with rum and spice notes but that one's a lot thicker, this one's a lot more transparent and a lot w more watery so not a lot really i could compare this one to this one sort of is in its own leak if someone were trying to talk you into buying this one i think they would tell you that it's unique it smells really good it's quality craftsmanship from a classy house and it's very versatile on the flip side if someone were trying to get you to pass on this one they might tell you that that turpentine opening could throw some people off uh, it's rough at the top and price at the retail level is a little high I think this is a nice scent from Vapon. It really made me want to look at some of the other scents that I mentioned before. Uh, Speakeasy, Paradise Purdue, 
um, a Terre de Serre Mont. I think those are fragrances that I definitely want to look at. I'm really impressed. 1270 and like Humani seem to get all the love. Trust me, this house has some other fragrances worth looking at. I'm going to give Passion Bois a 7.5 out of 10. It was a nice surprise. I got it at a great price. I really enjoy the way this one smells. I wish it performed a little bit better and I wish the box was a little bit nicer being that this is a house that bottles very expensive cognac. Um, I think they could have done a little bit better job in that regards but it's a well done versatile scent that I find to be very much unique and very well crafted so guys I want to thank you for watching this review of Passion Bois by for pun we'll be back next week with another review if you have any questions you can email me at maxmno at gmail.com you know what it is my name is Maximilian and I must know street, now you can see what he was just thinking I'm talking enemies so they start turning pale Satan said I'm learning well the gal's going to burn in hell running gets started cause giraffe style ain't even